here with Phil Schreier, Senior Curator of the National Firearms Museum at NRA. And Phil, we're in the bonus rounds here of Phil Noir Month. It originally was in November. We've stretched it into December because we had so many neat firearms and things to talk about from the period, the film Noir period. First, let's remind everybody what that's all about, and then we'll talk about the firearm for display for this week. Thanks, John. It's always a pleasure to be here with you on the show. Uh, you know, we've been talking for the uh, last couple of weeks about film noir period guns. And uh, all the f just to remind the audience that's tuning in for the first time, catching this first, uh, film noir is a, uh, a specific genre of film. Uh, the French word literally translated means uh, black film or dark film. And it's a reflection of the attitudes and tastes of the uh, American directors who were producing uh, uh, detective melodramas, uh, you know, from 1941 generally with uh, Maltese Falcon, uh, directed by John Huston, all the way through uh, 1958 or so with uh, Touch of Evil, starring NRA's very own Charlton Heston and uh, Orson Welles, one of the greatest directors of all time. So we got introduced to some classic characters, some classic stories, and some and some classic firearms, but. Phil, you, you featured some great firearms already, but I'm a little confused this week because this is not a firearm. It's a, a cartridge. What, what, what gives? That, that uh, well, that's one of the most effective uh, cartridges ever made. Uh, you know, it goes in the 1911, and I'd like you to say hello to my little friend here. <laughs> the, uh, the gun that made the 20s roar. A Chicago typewriter, a GAT, whatever you want to call it, uh, the uh, the tw the uh, the Thompson submachine gun, uh, the Tommy well, gun. Yeah, well, not a uh, classic detective gun. Uh, certainly uh, shows up in plenty of the uh, plenty of, films. of the films of the uh, of the time period. Uh, you know, the uh, the Thompson was something that. Uh, uh, Colonel John T. Thompson, uh, a veteran of the war in Cuba, he had actually given Theodore Roosevelt uh, the uh, Gatling guns he used at San Juan Hill. Uh, he uh, uh, was the guy that, that literally went around and, and helped design and develop the 45 uh, uh, auto round in 19, uh, 1905 by doing uh, ballistic tests because the uh, the standard military round at the time, the 38, just wasn't getting the job done on the uh, on the natives in, in the Philippines. Uh, so he needed something that killed bugs dead. And uh, they designed the 45 round and then decided to build a pistol around the cartridge, basically. <laughs> uh, and that's what came uh, of that was the 1911. Uh, Thompson, uh, who had helped develop that, uh, started to develop uh, what's called a submachine gun in 1919. Uh, well, didn't start developing it, he actually produced some in 1919. We call them submachine guns because they fire pistol ammo. A machine gun technically fires rifle uh, cartridges. So uh, if you're talking about a machine gun, uh, let's say an M60, uh, that's in, uh, uh, you know, uh, 556 uh, 308. Uh, your uh, 249s, your saws, or and in, 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 uh, 5.56. Uh, you look at your uh, BARs. That's a machine gun. It fires 30 out six. Your Maxims, your Vickers, uh, uh, your Browning 1919s. Uh, those are all machine guns. Submachine guns fire pistol rounds. And uh, the uh, uh, the Thompson uh, was the uh, the first successful American design submachine gun. Uh, beginning in 1919, uh, this is a model in 1921, uh, and it was followed by models of uh, 1927, uh, which were semi-auto, and uh, the model of 1928, which is basically a model 1921 that was just re redone a little bit. Uh, then when World War II kicked in, uh, the, uh, the Thompson M1, uh, which was the uh, the expedient uh, that was made in mass production for World War II uh, purposes. Now, most well, visually notably on here, there's two kinds of magazines, and this is the, the, the drum magazine. That's right. There's two types of drum magazines. Uh, you see this one uh, a lot in some of the films. Uh, this is called a C-drum. 
the Roman no numeral C for 100, because this holds 100 rounds of, uh, of 45. Uh, you have your, uh, what they call the box magazine, uh, and they held, uh, th these were the first magazines for the gun. Uh, they held 20 rounds, and then later on, uh, 30 round uh, box magazines. Uh, and the uh, models of, uh, of uh, 1921 and 28 will take both the, uh, the drum and the box mag. Uh, but the World War II gun, the M1, only takes uh, box magazines, won't take the, uh, oh, okay. the, uh, the drum magazine in one of those. Now that, that's loaded up with some dummy rounds, so you can, can you work that action? Yeah, the, uh, the uh, watch here, we, the, this is the, uh, the bolt, it, uh, it slides back. Uh, we, uh, did we get a round out? Uh, we got one ready to go. Uh, so uh, that just works back and forth. Uh, we, we bring that forward, it fires, and then, uh, then the, uh, the empty shell casing wow. and round would, would eject if, uh, <laughs> if it was actually cycling, but this is a dummy mag with right. uh, dummy rounds in it. Wow. So uh, it's beautiful. Uh, we're working with a little disadvantage. Uh, but the, uh, the, the World War II model, the rear sight was uh, uh, much more basic. Didn't have the, uh, the top uh, uh, you know, charger here. It was just a bolt on the side, right. less milling, uh, and uh, the uh, the barrel wasn't thin. This is here for cooling, uh, so that it, you know the uh, the heat coming off the barrel doesn't interrupt your uh, yeah. your thing. Now you know when we're talking about film noir, uh, generally we mean the black and whites, and they call some of the color films of uh, the same genre neo noirs. Uh, uh, you know, we have Roman Polanski's Chinatown, uh, Pulp Fiction. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, and I tell you, if you haven't seen this, go get it tonight and watch it because it has the finest scene ever filmed with a Thompson, and that's the Coen Brothers Miller's Cross. Oh. And uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Albert Finney walking down that street with yes. that Thompson. Uh, what a great, great scene. You know, you can almost light his, relight his cigar <laughs> off the smoking barrel. And I don't know what kind of drum he used, but it had to have held a thousand was, rounds. Yeah, the thousand uh, magazine. But uh, it was, what an amazing, uh, you know, series of, of, of footage uh, of a Thompson. No film in history has got a better Thompson uh, scene than... Uh, than that, you know, uh, Gabriel Byrne's interaction with the uh, the lieutenant. He says, "Well, the old man's still an artist with the Thompson." <laughs> what a great film! Well, Phil, it's been Phil. It's been an, an amazing run here. Our special Phil Noir month and a half, I should say, of Curators Corners. Tell us how we could see this farm and other ones like it here at the National Farms Museum. Well, John, thanks again for having us as always, and uh, for you folks uh, listening or watching. Uh, from home, we, uh, we'd like you to stop by the uh, NRA's National Firearms Museum at NRA Headquarters, located in Fairfax, Virginia, just 12 miles west of Washington, D.C., off of Interstate Route 66 and the intersection of U.S. Route 50. If uh, you uh, can come by and visit us, we're open seven days a week, free admission from 9.30 in the morning till 5 in the evening until 7 o'clock p.m. on Saturdays. Uh, you can't make it to Fairfax, you really need to visit our brand new website, the nationalfirearmsmuseum.org. You're going to be really thrilled to see the, uh, the great features we have up on the new NRA Museum website. Well, Phil, thank you for, for, for this special treat, the Phil Noir. Looking to, thanks for inviting us into your, your secret Phil Noir office. Now we know where you are. Your name's on the window. We'll come by <laughs> and visit more often. And thanks for being here for another installment of The Curator's Corner. John, this has been a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to our, uh, our next foray into the, uh, into the realm of uh, the absurd. <laughs>